morning. Good morning, Streamline Church. If you can please stand to your feet this morning. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen? Let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. That is new every morning, Lord. This morning, God, we come before you to your house to exalt, to glorify, to lift that name above all names on high, Lord. This morning, God, for those that are still on their way, we pray that you provide safe traveling mercies, Lord. And for those that are at home, Lord, worshiping you, Father, from their living rooms, from their jobs, wherever they may be, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit may fill them, that your love may touch them, God. We honor you. We glorify you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Our only aim is to worship you this morning, God. We exalt you. We glorify you, King. This morning, let us sing it out. Who am I? And who am I that you are mindful of me? And you hear me when I call, when I call. Yes, help us with your hands this morning. True that you are thinking of me. How you love me, how you love me. It's amazing. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I fall. Friend, oh, we lift 
Amen, Streamline Church. Are we awake? Amen. Because if not, these little animals over here are going to praise the Lord. <laughs> right? Amen. We worship you this morning, God. We've declared it that we, you call us friend, God. We know who we are. In you, God, we are everything, God. In you, we have all things, Jesus. That is as we stand this morning, God. As children of the Most High, we worship you, God, right there where you're at. Just worship him with your own words, with your own song. Lord, we exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you.
morning really believe it. These words really believe them. I am chosen. this morning, God. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. We exalt you, almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, just worship him with your own words this morning. We exalt you, God.
take your seat this morning. Greet two or three people. Tell them it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen and amen. Good morning, Streamline Church. How's everybody doing today? Good morning. Good I'm morning. So Sorry, I blew you out of the water. I was just going to say, it's so <coughs> nice to see everyone's happy, smiley faces. <laughs> yeah, I needed some water because I was getting my praise on for a second. Anyway, good morning, and I want to say good morning to those of you who are jumping in with us on live stream, part of the Streamline family. We're so glad that you're here today worshiping with us growing in the word today and uh, you're part of our community here so thank you for coming and uh, you know uh, last week I had uh, some people mess with me and say that I get too flirtatious with you <laughs> and I'm like what are you talking like they're talking about how I'm I'm extra all right and I'm like, well, she's fine. Look at how cute she is. What am I supposed to do? That's why I said, honey, please do not embarrass me today or I'll never go up there again. <laughs> so this is the last time Lori's going to be up here today. No. <laughs> anyway, all right, no more, no more. Um, if you're a guest today, we want to welcome you and we would like to uh, give you a gift uh, on your way out today. And so we have these gentlemen right here. They've got these big yellow cards and what we'd like for you to do if it's your first time is if you would just wave them down or maybe it's not your first time and you've never filled one of these out. If you'd wave them down as they're headed back, uh, they will give you one. And then at the welcome bar today, you can go ahead and stop in and you can get a gift and uh, connect with someone at that table. And then what are some ways for people to, that are watching, that are jumping in, how can they connect with us too? You know what, if you're online with us today, we want to welcome you and just give us a thumbs up yeah. or a smiley emoji, a hand wave. Just let us know you're with us. Very good. Very good. Thank you. And we want to uh, prepare for the offering. And I just want to thank you for being faithful to the Lord with your tithe. It helps us move the mission forward. And honestly, it's something that Lori and I have been obedient with and giving the tithe the 10% of our income for uh, decades since we've been married. And it's just something we believe in and we uh, place our faith in. And there are different ways you can give. Uh, many give online, maybe on their phones, on our website. We have these donation stands on the way out or the kiosk. You can give there. But I just thank you for being a part of that contribution as a streamlined family that uh, you help bless our city by your giving. Now, we have something, I don't know, I think there's something around here that we have coming up this week. And I don't know if you guys spotted anything different on the stage today. I'm surprised you're not having an allergic reaction with all this hay around us. I know. <laughs> it, it could get bad later on when I'm talking. So but anyway, you know what? what's happening? We are super excited for our Splash Days coming up. We do this every year. Yeah. I love when kids learn about Jesus, and I love when kids have fun. And that's exactly what they're going to be doing. Right. Um, on Friday, starting Friday through Sunday, um, and we're also having, uh, we're creating a splash park outside. So thank God it's going to be 99 degrees. I was so worried about the weather, but God, he, he showed up. She, she was up, worried so. about the weather in July. I don't yeah. think you need to be worried about that. Well, we, we had a, <laughs> a cold streak yeah. last week. So. <laughs> so it'll be hotter this week, but um, the QR code is right here. You can see it on the screen at home, and uh, we need them to register. Yes, absolutely. Register, right. please. Uh, if you could register ASAP because we need to um, get a count of all the kids so we can make sure we know how much food to provide uh, and crafts, things like that, supplies. So we yeah. really need that head count. So if you could register, please do so. Um, you can go on Streamline Church website and you'll find the QR code there or here. Yeah. So you just hit the QR code and you're good. And uh, they're supposed to wear their bathing suits underneath Underneath their, their clothes. clothes, yes. Bring your child dressed in their bathing suits under their clothes with a towel. And it, because it's happening every day, uh, um, in every day that they're having it, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, too. We're, yes. we're moving it into Sunday morning, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But um, my wife is the director and leader for our kids' ministry, and doesn't she do a great job? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love what I do. 
She has a lot of volunteers and help, but yes. uh, she doesn't give herself enough credit. The program is going to be excellent, and uh, you can see the hard work and creativity she puts in along with her team. Yes. But um, this is something that we want to uh, remember, that this is an outreach for us. If you know kids, you know families that need to be here, it's all free, and we just want them to come. They don't have to go to our church uh, to come to this. And so make sure that you invite someone and bring them out, and we're going to see some little kids give their lives Amen. to Jesus. Amen. Yes, that's what it's all about. That's right. So, And I just want to thank all my volunteers that came out on Friday to help out, to put this whole thing together. It's a lot of work and they did a fabulous job. So. Yeah, even in the lobby and what yes, they did. Absolutely. And then uh, next week, kind of to close it off on Sunday, we're having ice cream Sunday. And so we're going to have some Leatherby's ice cream and have a good time. Uh, Sunday is the conclusion of that. Right. And so we're going to go ahead and have a good time. So make sure you bring someone. How many of you guys like Leatherby's ice cream? Okay, that's what I thought. I knew that was going to be good. Anyway, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And then one other thing is that we have a men's event coming up and we want, this is just a bowling night for the guys. And so, uh, fellas, it's not easy for us to kind of get out of our man caves and go and connect with other guys. But especially if you are new, we want you to come. We want you to go free. We don't want you to have to pay for anything. And uh, so what we need you to do is just help us register and be ready by going on the QR code. We got QR codes for everything. Yes. Make it easy everything okay and so um so make sure that you sign up for that and register and if you like more information marshall madrigal is going to be at the sign up wall today as you leave all right okay it's kind of quiet in here today all right good good um would you go ahead and pray for the offering today and then we're going to get ready for the message this morning yes Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all you do, all you give us, and now it's time to give back to you, Lord. So I pray that you would just bless the hands that give to those and those that can't, Lord, that you'd also bless them, Lord. And um, just bless the service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. You can go ahead and give that to Eli there as you're leaving today. And we're going to jump right into the message. On the screen, you can get e-notes if you would like. We have, um, you, you know, instead of holding the notes in your hand, you can go on the Uversion app. So when you go on the QR code here, it'll take you there. All your notes are there. You can fill it out, and you can actually save it in the app. And I guarantee you there's a lot of stuff that you're going to want to save from today, okay? <clears throat> now, I, I started a new series last week. And I told everybody it's going to be different. This is more of a teaching series uh, for summer, and we're going into some real, some real good, meaty stuff as far as having a church that is healthy. How many of you were here last week and you heard the first message? All right. Hey, um, last week was funny because... I, I was sharing this, this message, and, I, and I'm just kind of chilling out and, uh, for the next few weeks as I share. But um, last week, I got done with the message, and I felt like, oh, man, I think that bombed. I don't think anybody, like, really got anything. It was dead quiet. So I get off stage afterwards. I'm talking with some of our leaders, and I said, hey, uh, man, did, did it make sense, or was it not clear because uh, I'm not sure it hit, and, and uh, they had already heard this material before and had some training in this, and so they're like, no, I think it was okay, and blah, blah, so I wasn't sure. And so um, I'm like hoping, I got some reviews to where some people are like, yeah, I had to process during the service. How many of you just had to process during the service? And what I was sharing, some of you are like, I ain't, ain't raising my hand, I got some junk, right? So this is, this is what happened, what was so cool. I went on YouTube this week, and the service last week was the highest watched on YouTube I think we may have ever had. And I'm talking in one week, and within one week's time is what I'm talking about. We, uh, we have almost four times, or maybe more than four times, what we usually get viewed in one week. How many of you know people are curious, people are touchy when it comes to bad church? It's really obvious. It was obvious in that. I was like, oh my gosh, they were so quiet. Obviously, they were processing and trying to get this down. And, and, I, and I just was blown away by that, that people are desiring not to be a bad church, but how are we going to clean it up and not be bad church? Can I get an amen? 
And so it's up to us to make the changes. And last week we talked about ignorant church and how if we're ignorant toward the schemes of the devil and the ways that things happen in the church and conflict and where things get bad, we're going to miss it. And, and if we miss it for ourselves, the church is going to miss it. And people, when they come in, they're going to continue to get hurt. Now, how many of you have been hurt in some way in church? Some kind of conflict, something. Yeah, it's so common. I've had it done when I was growing up. And it's so common. And so we don't want to be ignorant of that. We want to grow from it. And today, we're going to talk about the vulnerable church. We're going to talk about how you and I, we are vulnerable when it comes to bad reports, bad church, if we're not careful and we're not aware of what's going on around us. Now, last year, I went on a trip with some pastors down to Mexico, and uh, we had a great time. We had, we had a week planned, and it was just a time to encourage each other and, and just kind of relax and, and be there just uh, to spend time together. And while I was there, uh, we went, and in order to get back into the States, you had to go and get your COVID test. And so we, everybody went, got their COVID test so they could hop on the plane and come home back to America on, uh, on the Friday. And so everybody got their test and they're all reading them over and whew, whew, everybody's feeling good about it. And out of eight of us, guess who got COVID? The only one. I was the only one who got COVID in Mexico. In Mexico. And so literally, um, th- th- some people have heard this story, but, but literally, I, if I wanted to come home, I had to get out of there, they would have quarantined me for 14 days. And so that day when I found out, I'm like, I'm making a run for the border, y'all. You can call me immigrant, whatever. I'm getting across this border, right? And, and so um, I was further down in Mexico. I got up to Tijuana, and like at 12, 1 o'clock at night, I am crossing the border to get into California. And I don't know what happened. These guys all were fine, but I'm the one that has to make a run for the border in the middle of the night to get out of Mexico. And I don't know what, what they were exposed to or weren't exposed to and what I was exposed to, but somehow I got infected. And see, when it comes to the church, we have to be careful and be vigilant in understanding where we're vulnerable and what we're exposed to, who we're exposed to, what type of behavior we're exposed to, and not only when are we getting near it, but what to do when we have that exposure happen inside of us. And so what we're trying to do over the next few weeks is we're trying to make sure that we don't fall into the same trap as other people or other churches and we have bad church. How many of you know that God did not design us to have bad church but good church, healthy church, loving church, church, attractive church? That's what he designed for us. But people in droves, for decades, even centuries, have been hurt by church. They've had bad church experience. It may have come in ways of, you know, leadership who did something that hurt. Maybe some other people in the church that hurt did some things that were wrong. Or maybe there are some things that you saw were shady. And, and you just kind of slammed the door shut and said, I'm out of here some of you, it's a, it's a blessing that you would even start making uh, progress and coming back to church. I know some of you have a history of being in having bad church experience, and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen here, because you know who's who's responsible for having bad church? You and I. It's not just the pastors. It's not just the organization, if you will, but it's people. Because who's the church? You are. And so all of us, if we want to have good church, if you want to be a good church, and then we have a good church, then we have to be aware of a couple of things that cause us to have bad church. And one is this, is character. Our character is what preaches to the world. And they see not only us talking about serving God and following God and being like Jesus, they need to see it. They need to see how we are and how we live and if we're true and how we are towards other people. It is that character that is there that we need to have. And the other thing is they need to see how we handle conflict. They need to see how we handle problems. 
They need to, they, they're looking to see if, if we talk about other people or if, or if we go and we just let other people have it or, or if we just say things that are hurtful and, and we don't care about people that we're just concerned with getting our way and, and it's all agendas. We, we don't want them to have that. We need to learn how to have conflict right because how many of you know we're all gonna have run-ins at some point? We're going to. But man, it makes a great church when we know how to do the run-ins right and handle them the way God would want us to handle them. And so we are going to move through this today, and I encourage you to take notes. It's uh, so important that you're able to take notes, uh, especially for this series that we're talking about, because we have a high standard that Christ has set Jesus has set a high standard for us. He is Christ, he is the head, and we are the body of Christ. And so we should be excelling in love. We should be excelling in hope. We should be excelling in supporting people, protecting people, believing the best in people, wanting the best, helping, because that's what the church of God should look like. And so for some of you that you have had bad church experience, I want to apologize to you and tell you I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you have experienced that. I'm sorry that maybe it's been a turn off or, or pushed you away because, man, those, those people or that guy or that lady or you feel like you've been judged, you feel like you've been turned away or ignored or someone saw something bad in you, I want to apologize and just say I'm sorry for church worldwide on behalf of the Lord because that is not what the church is for. The church is a hospital. We don't come in here perfect. We come in here to get perfected by God and get healed up. And so we want to have that place of healing. And so Get your notes ready today because I'm going to talk about what bad church is and how to understand when we're getting close to bad church and maybe people, who, uh, Christians who have some bad things that they're doing and we need to be aware of it. Because bad church begins with bad messages that we send out. You know your behavior, the way you talk, the way you live in church, out of church, you're sending a message. You're sending a message of what kind of Christian, what kind of church we're a part of. And so we have to be careful, and if you look in Numbers, in the, in the Old Testament, here what it did was, it, it, it shared a, a story of, there was like 10 guys who came back with a bad report for the people of God, and then there was two guys who came back with a good report, and the bad report really hurt the community of God. And it says this, it says right here in Numbers 1437, it said, men who brought a bad report died by plague before the Lord. See, what happens is, is when we bring bad reports, the church gets sick. The church gets sick when we bring these bad reports that are damaging, that are hurtful, the messages we're sending out. As a matter of fact, this word bad, uh, the root word for that in Hebrew is ra, which also means sin and also means evil. That bad reports, bad messages are evil messages, evil reports, because they don't reflect the nature of God, which is good. Can I get an amen? And what's going to happen is, is if we're not careful, we're going to die by plague. We're going to defile God's church. And this is what defile means. It means foul. It means corrupt. It means to make dirty, to pollute. That's what happens in the body of Christ. And so what it does is it destroys unity and then it promotes division if we're not careful because we're pushing people away. We're hurting people. People are getting wounded. They have pain. They get discouraged about God because I don't think that people have a problem with God. I don't think the overwhelming majority have a problem with Jesus or even the Bible. I think they have a problem with how we work together in the church if we're providing bad church or good church. Are you following me today? And so we're going to go ahead and, and follow along here, and, and here is what we're gonna review every week. And this is the major cause of defilement and the wrong responses to bad reports or evil reports that come and they destroy God's house. Now I know it may be quiet in here today, and I'm gonna be, you can say amen when you, when you want to, and you can say, oh dang, when it's you, okay? You, you, can, you can do that. You can do that. But here are the wrong responses to evil reports. 
An evil report involves distortion of facts. We twist it because sometimes it's just kind of juicy when we, when we shake things up a bit. Incomplete facts, we leave some stuff out. Or false information. Altogether, maybe a lie or gossip, something that just makes it hurtful more than, more than it should with the truth. Because some people think, well, it's the truth, isn't it? Just because it's the truth doesn't mean we need to throw tr- truth at people and just hurt them. Because, well, it's the truth. Truth hurts. Deal with it. That causes pain. It said it is given with wrong motivations and causes the hearer to come to inaccurate conclusions. And to respond with unscriptural solutions. Because how many of you know it is in our nature to handle things the way the world does instead of handling things the way that the Bible says? Because the Bible has harder solutions than we know of in the world. But the truth is, this continues to bring destruction. But when we handle things God's way, the biblical way, which isn't easy, everything turns out better. And you don't have to fear bad church when you're over here. It says evil reports are so destructive that they can even destroy long-lasting close friendships. A gossip separates close friends, and I have seen this so many times over the years, and it is painful to watch this. There's one more thing we need to note. It says wrongdoing should never be covered over. We don't just act like it didn't happen here at Streamline Church, nor should any other church. Like, yeah, it's okay, we'll figure it out later, or we push it off because it's difficult. No, we have to handle it because we want to make sure that we have a healthy church. It must be brought to the attention of those who are responsible and dealt with in a scriptural manner, not opinion, not what is easy. Pastor Dave doesn't use it on what he thinks works or the way he thinks it should be. It's like, let's go to the Word of God. That was a good place for an amen. You could do that. At home, would you at least go ahead and put amen in the comments, please? They need help here. Please put that. I'm going to look later on, all right? The necessary, okay, now I'm getting it. You guys are late. You're delayed. You got to catch up with me. Okay, the necessary process will be damaged by the defilement of an evil report. We have to be careful that we don't bring damage into the body. And there are stages of defilement like a disease, okay? And we're going to walk through this because this is the illustration that we're using for this series. I'm going to kind of throw this over here. It says, in the medical world, there are stages in the development of of a disease. In the same way, there are stages of destruction to a spiritually healthy person. Here they are, ignorance, exposure, contamination, infection, and disease. This is a pathway that you get sick and you have a disease. So we're using that and we're looking at that, how it makes a a church full of disease, bad, sick, and a place to where I don't want to go there. Ignorance of preventive measures to avoid defilement. We're going to, we made sure last week, if you didn't catch last week's message, you need to go back and you need to be able to see, man, what's going on and I didn't know this was there. Or some of us, maybe you looked at something, you seen something that I mentioned, you're like, that's what that was. Oh, now I get it. Or you may have seen it before. You're like, that's me. I do that. I am a sinner. Right? Right? See, it got quiet again. Anyway, so today we're jumping from ignorance and we're going to exposure to one who is already infected. That we would go and we see, man, this is one of those people that can bring bad church. Not that they're a terrible person. But because of the way they act, the way they handle people, the way that they interact with other people, or the way they behave, I need to be able to have my eyes opened up and say, I'm in that zone. I'm in that environment. And now I need to be aware because I don't want my ignorance to lead me to exposure, to lead me to contamination. Then I'm infected, then I'm diseased, and I'm doing the same thing. Are you following me? And so today... What we're going to do is I'm just going to teach a little bit. Can I, can I talk to you this morning? And we're going to talk about exposure, but you know what? I think my allergies are kicking in because of this hay up here. Hay fever. I've got the fever <laughs> for some cowbell. No, anyway, okay. Some of you are like, what in the world is he talking about? Okay, here's what exposure is. Exposure is entering into a conversation with a person who is a carrier of an evil report. That you realize, I, here I am, 
This person, there's some, there's some bad communication that's starting to come up. The way they're talking, the things they're saying. Oh no, here it is. What do I do? It's entering into a conversation with a person who is a carrier of an evil report that we would see and understand there is danger ahead. In Proverbs, it says this, 27. The prudent see danger and take refuge. They go and hide out and they get into a a safe place. But the simple keep going and suffer for it. Our church, you and I, we're gonna suffer if we are not careful and understand when we are exposed to danger. That you would be able to say this in your mind, stranger danger. Stranger danger. I am in the environment. I am where this dangerous territory is. Stranger danger because I don't want to keep going and suffer for it later on. And here I am with a disease and I am having bad church myself. We have protective physical defenses to warn us about physical contamination. We can smell it, taste it, and see it. Sometimes, however, we're unaware of contamination until it's too late and it's starting to get inside of us. God gives us spiritual defenses to warn us about spiritual contamination. We can sense the promptings of the Holy Spirit, follow the warnings of God's word, obey the wise counsel of our human authorities. Sometimes, however, we are unaware of spiritual danger until it's too late and you and I become spiritually sick people. Spiritually sick. And we're ones who are giving bad communication. And and the people that we need to be pointing the finger at isn't other people in the church. It is, it's me. And so here's how we're going to detect. We're going to get this, we're going to go to school right now. We're going to get to work, all right? And and we're going to look at some things here. Um, Romans Uh, We're going to learn how to detect an evil report. And this is what the book of Romans says. I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. It says, I want you to be aware. Those who are causing division and and making it to where it doesn't uh, create unity and love, it actually creates hurt and puts distance and chasms between people. And it causes division. And so that's what happens with a carrier. And so we're going to jump through some of this and some of you are going to be like, oh, dude, I get it now. A carrier will usually test your spirit before giving you the evil report. They will usually test your spirit to see if there's any compatible spirit inside of you that will encourage him or her to give the report. Here's how it will show up. Is that I'm gonna, I'm paying attention. If I'm gonna give an evil report, I start testing your spirit and feel incompatible when you start talking about other people. That if you're one that likes to spread gossip or rumors, or likes to try and act like you're saying things out of concern, but you're talking about people or whatever, whenever you're doing that, and if I'm a carrier of an evil spirit, I just know, man, I I think we're gonna be okay. I'm gonna be able to share this with them. And what's gonna happen is when you're with a carrier, they're gonna test your spirit. See that within yourself. Are you one who does that yourself? Another thing a carrier will usually do is a carrier will usually check your acceptance of his report before giving it to you. He may do this by asking your opinion of a person, drop a negative comment, and then observe your response. You know, like, man, I tell you, that, that Ricardo, man, he's, he's, you know, he's got a good heart and everything, but you know what I'm saying? And, and then, and then I'm just kind of feeling out this person to be like, if they're like, I, I know what you're saying. Man, I think they're going to take in my evil report. Or, you know, someone may say this to just kind of make it, make it where you can digest it. You ever heard someone say, bless your heart? Amen. Or bless their heart? You know what I'm saying? He's such a jerk. Bless his heart. You know what I mean? Or she's so mean and nasty, but bless her heart, you know? And we, we do that. What I'm doing is, is I'm trying to, hey, Ricardo's okay. He's a great dude, okay? I'm, I'm just like, but, but be ready to be exposed. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. 
No, but, but I want you to see this. There is, I, I'm, I'm trying to see if you're gonna be acceptance to what I'm sharing by, and see how your response is. Another thing, you'll be able to uh, detect a carrier of an evil report. A, evil, uh, a character or a carrier will often get you to ask for the evil report by creating curiosity for it. Get you to ask what can I say that will get this person to respond? It's such things as, hey, have you heard about so-and-so? You heard, you heard about Suya? Yeah, you, you know, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. You know, we don't want to gossip about people and stuff, but we need to be praying for her. Right? Right? You know... You know, or some just go in for the kilt, man, wait till I tell you about so-and-so, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe, this is crazy. Now, how many of you, we're going to get real here, how many of you have been on the giving end of that and been the carrier? Come on, me too. The rest of you are lying. The rest of you are lying in church, all right? That's a bad report. That's evil and wicked. Everybody stay away from those who had their hands down. You have entered into. No. But I, we, we have done that to where we get someone to ask and then we just go for it because we know they're gonna, want, they're gonna eat this up too. And it's bad messages that we're sending out because it's really hurtful so much when we do it to, uh, with, in front of those who are non-believers outside of the church and then also with people who come in here and they are experiencing this type of behavior and interaction from us. Another thing a carrier may communicate is an evil report by asking us for counsel or by sharing a concern for the person involved. By asking for counsel like, I'm really, I'm really coming with integrity. I, I'm really coming for a good reason here. I'm concerned because Josh is jacked up. There, there, there are some things, and I, I just, I heard him say this, and I don't know what to do, but would you help me understand how I should do this? And then the other person says, well, what did he say? Well, I, I don't, you, you know, uh, well, I'll, I'll just tell you. And then go ahead, and within this context here, I'm something, I'm, I'm, I'm in this context here, I, I'm sharing something private with false concern. I'm not concerned. I got something I got to get out of me. And this is where last week, like I talked about, to where since we're in the prayer meeting here and we're bringing all of this stuff and in the name of prayer we're bringing people up and hey, we just need to pray for Josh. He's so messed up and he's got this going on and he says this and this. Let's just pray for our brother today. And then what happens? Our brother finds out what was said in the prayer meeting about him and it just crucifies his spirit. That's how a person carrying a, an evil report will communicate by asking for counsel when maybe that's really not their motive at all. The next thing a carrier may use is, may use evil reports to get you to admire him or her. Or because of being on the inside and having access to privileged information. Now, I don't want to ask how many have done this because I'll probably get some people who give bad reports again and lie in church. But to where you kind of feel a little superior and elevated because, oh my gosh, I know this. If anybody knew what I have. And then when you're talking to somebody, what, what does it is makes you feel like you're privileged or you have inside information is when they're just like, wait, wait, what, what? What are you talking about? How'd you find, how'd you find that out? Really, so-and-so said that? Well, man, you know what you really gotta do is, and, and we just fit, oh, psh, hey, you know, I'll, I'll see if I can find out. I'm not sure. Now, we may not talk like that exactly, but, that, but that's just kind of what comes out in our spirit because we're a carrier of an evil report and we like bad news because bad news is juicy news. 
I knew it was going to be quiet again. I'm prepared for you to be quiet this week. I wasn't last week. We're just teaching. We're just teaching. A carrier is usually one who evokes vivid details of evil and will even search them out. If you were one, check this out. If you were one who likes to find problems, who enjoys finding out dirt about people, and something just gets you going, maybe your adrenaline, be careful because you may be a carrier. Be careful of that. Or, or maybe in those instances to where you just want to discover more, it, it may not be all the time, it may not be what you're about, but when you hear something, you just got to find out more information. You start asking others. Or maybe you, maybe you call sister so-and-so and just to see, hey, do you know anything about, you know? God condemns such detectives of darkness whose tongues are like sharp swords. God condemns that. That is not okay. That is not what we do in trying to find out what is bad. What we should be doing is be a church where we believe in people. We believe the best in people. We want great things to happen. And whenever we hear bad things about people, we do not want to accept it. We may be aware of it if it's dangerous or what's going on, but we're going to make sure. I'm not going to get sucked into this and now become a bad church myself and now bring bad church into the church. You following me? So now we have to talk about how to detect an evil report. This really brings it to the surface. There are four questions that you can be aware of when you're, uh, when you're uh, listening to a carrier to where you ask a question and then it reveals if this is a bad report. And even it will bring it to the attention of the other person. Ephesians 5.11 says this have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Now look, we're not trying to crucify people that are bringing bad reports. Let's be honest, many of you, you still have the bad reports and you give bad messages off because maybe you're just new to God, you're new to Christ, and you're coming in, that's just been your way. Or maybe you've had that done so many times to you that you naturally, now it's just your defense mechanism and, and you begin to talk about other people because it gets you, the attention that's coming onto you, it gets it to somebody else. And so it doesn't make a person bad, it just means this person is doing some bad destructive things that can harm a lot of people. So what I've got to do, not just as a pastor, but as another Christian, is I've got to be able to ask questions that expose it to me, that like I'm like, okay, yeah, this really is. And then also create questions for the other person that is sharing the bad reports when they begin to answer or be asked these questions of like, uh, mm, uh, mm. especially within church circles. This is what's crazy. is now that we are teaching this among all the church people here at Streamline, now we're all held accountable. Right? Because if I'm talking to Tiara and all of a sudden she drops something to me, you're like, mm. She's doing it. She's, she's one of them. Right? Right? Anthony's raising his hand like, preach it, come on. But now I know. But I'm going to tell you something. What's going to happen is, is Tierra has heard this stuff. She's seen what an evil report is. And right when she's starting to say something, she's like, oh, I don't want to be one of them. I don't want to have this coming out. And that's what happens is it brings accountability. And my hope is that going through this as a church and me sharing this, we would have people that would just be like, oh, mm-mm, mm-mm, not me, not my church. See, this is when we fight for church. When we fight to have a healthy church, it's not like, hey, amen, we're going to go in and war in the spirit and worship. No, what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure I have great conduct, then I'm going to give all of my heart and my attention to living like Christ, to treating people like Christ, to loving people, and then I'm going to make sure when there are problems that I handle them according to Scripture. That's what creates healthy church. Bad church is bad church when we do it our own way and we try to have our own way and we're worried about other people being responsible for the church instead of ourselves. 
I'm just teaching. I'm not preaching. This is how we can detect an evil report. Some questions that are so huge and valuable is how can I help you? When someone comes up, they got a juicy story. They got something to say. That your response would be, how can I help you? Now, the goal isn't to hurt them. What we're trying to ask them is, what's your reason for telling me? What does is it brings up in their mind of, my reason was to just gossip and talk about it. That I am revealing to them, I am here for help, but I am not here to participate. And so the question it brings up right away is, when you say, how can I help? It exposes the motives of the person for yourself and for them that you're not, they're not telling you because they need help. What they're doing is they're widening the circle which compounds the conflicts and the problems within the church because we start gaining traction on having bad church. Another question that we ask is, is where did you get your information? Oh, how did you find out? Where, where did that come from? Because now what I'm asking is, is how true is your source? How true are the things that you are saying? Or it reveals this, you got it from so-and-so, you know so-and-so is jacked up and they got a lot of gossiping and stuff they say. So now you know where it comes from because you want to be able to ask these questions because you're probably not getting all the facts. And refusal, this is what happens with people who have bad reports they're giving is refusal to identify the source of information is a sure sign of an evil report. Oh, I I can't tell you. I I can't tell you. I I don't want to violate confidence because I got a bad report. The next one is the question, not only how can I help you, where did you get your information, but have you personally checked out all the facts? Do you know this to be true? If it's something bad, that is unhealthy, that can be hurtful, that can be painful, that can be dangerous? Are you sure you know all the facts about this? Because many times people just run with things. Even facts become distorted when they're not balanced with other facts. I'm gonna tell you why. Is our excitement overrides our wisdom. Because you get excited. You get excited on something. Isn't it terrible we get excited with drama and and things that are going on with other people? And if I told you about so-and-so, what they were doing last night, and there's something exciting about that instead of being able to handle it with wisdom. See, when we follow things according to God's word to be able to have a great, attractive church, what we're saying is I'm handling it with wisdom and being careful because that's what we're out for and that's what Christ meant for the body of Christ to be. Are you following me? The last one is this, is can I quote you if I check this out? Can I quote you? If someone asks me, where did you find this out? Can I go ahead and let them know that, hey, this came from so-and-so? Those who give evil reports often claim they are, when that happens, misquoted. When their name is used. Or they'll come up with this. Oh, there was a miscommunication. I, I didn't mean for that to be said. I didn't mean that. I thought I said, I'm sorry. I just, it was something that, you you know, we got confused between you and I, and now you're part of the blame. This is because their words and overriding impressions are reported, and they begin to do what? Backpedal. Because now they, they don't want to be quoted. Because now they know they have gossiped, they have rumored, they have slandered somebody. They have been malicious in their motives. They have, they have done this and they're pulling back to get out of something. That's how we begin to detect it. So how does God want us to respond to it? How does God want us to respond to danger? You know, stranger danger. How does he want us to, it, to respond to those who, who I'm being exposed to? They're carriers of these bad, these evil reports. The first thing is this. This is so important. That you and I would have a heart for the people that are being mistreated by them. That the person that rumors are being spread about or gossip, they're being judged 
there, there's different things going on that we would have responses like this. Man, I'm really sad to hear that. That hurts my heart. Man, I really want, I really want to pray for them. Why don't we pray right now? That we would have that kind of heart and compassion because what it does is it confuses. I don't want, I don't want to see someone hurt any more than they need to be just by doing what they're doing. And it really puts a stop to the person who is a carrier. carrier. Galatians 6.1, because we don't just stop there with the person who's being violated, attacked, or is the victim. It says, As dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly, Godly doesn't mean perfect. My goal and my heart would be that Streamline Church would be full of people that are godly. That would say it's God's principles, it's God's way, it's God's character that comes first in my life. And everywhere I am and everywhere I go, I want to do the God type of thing. Those who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. Now who are we talking about? We're talking about the carrier We're talking about the carrier of the evil report, that those who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. What we're doing is we're caring for the victim and the offender. That you want to be careful how close and open you are to this person as a carrier because that juice, that excitement my rub uh, off on you. And what he says here in this scripture, I want you to see this. He said, if they've been overcome by some sin, this, this evil report, these things that they're saying, and, and they can't control it, they just automatically do it and engage in it. You who are godly, those we're, uh, we are out to do the God thing in our lives and live like Christ, should gently and hum- uh, humbly help that person. I want you to see this here. When I say gently and humbly, this isn't like we rebuke them. Because usually what we do is we get a little judgmental on them. And we, we feel like either we have to put them in their place or like just, hey man, I want you to know, that was wrong. You need to stop that. You need, no, gently and humbly. Hey man, I know maybe you don't mean to do this, but it's kind of coming across like this. And hey, it's hard for me. I can get sucked into the same thing, but... Man, we really, you and I, let's make a pact that we're going to work on moving this forward. Because what I'm trying to get us all to do in our church, and I mean us, like you and I, all of us together, is to make sure that we're all on the right path. And that we keep working together, but it's got to start with us just being humble and humble and gentle with each other and help each other. I'm not here to condemn you and put you down and say, you got a big mouth, why don't you shut up? And why don't you, you love destroying other people. That, now, I'm, now I'm bringing in a bad communication, a bad report, an evil report. The godly people are those that are controlled and obedient to the Holy Spirit. So here's a couple of things that we should do and we tell them, and then we're going to go into communion, like I said, we always, uh, we're going to do for this entire month every Sunday, is this is what we do when we see that coming to us. Number one, these are, this isn't in your notes, but you may want to jot some of these down, is direct the person to share the problem with the pastor or leader. Or go to the person that has the problem, but you go to a pastor or leader, and then you tell them this, don't tell anyone about this. We want to protect their image. We want to look out for them. So don't tell anybody about it. Because what happens is the more we tell, the more it compounds and it spreads. And now we're getting to a church that had just had a few bad people. Now we got a bad church altogether. And the best thing to do is have pastors and leaders not to tell on them, but to say, hey, look, how do we work this out? How do we make this better? And when we tell people not to tell anybody, we're telling them Don't tell anybody and make this worse and hurt more people. The other thing is, tell them you don't want to complicate the problem. I really shouldn't get involved in this. I I really, if I participate, it's just one more person. I don't want to get involved in it. You should just go to talk to them or go talk to a pastor and, and make sure it's right or a ministry leader. Or this one, tell them how we shouldn't share 
that with any others so it doesn't spread, like I said. And then do this. Teach that we protect people. We don't tell everything about people. We protect people. Even in their wrong, we protect people and we love people. So here's a question you have, and if our worship team can come up, and we're going to take communion. Is maybe, are you, or no, I don't want to say are you, because you are. Because so am I. Where would the area in your life be that you would say, I'm sick right there? Like, like I may not go and say it to everyone, but I got a couple of friends that we just kind of, it's our little chismosa circle. We talk and you just kind of, you just kind of eat people up for lunch. Or, what, I mean, what, what is it that maybe you say or you tend to do or you, you tend to slander people when you don't like them and make, uh, make sure other people think bad of them? Or do you spread rumors? And here's the thing about rumors. Many times people say, well, it's true, isn't it? So now we think we have permission to share something because it's true. Or we just want to hurt people. Maybe we're jealous. We're, we're envious of them. Or maybe... You know, we like to get condemning, so our pride inflates because we see someone else doing wrong and we judge them according to their sin so that we can feel better about ourselves. Where is that spot for you? Would you close your eyes just for a minute? What's your tendency in that area? What's your tendency in that area? Because usually when things get juicy, our mouths just open up. Because we want to have good church. We want to be great followers of Christ. That we would have a great church that is attractive to people. A place of healing. A place of vulnerability to be able to be open so that we can grow and learn more about God. I'm going to pray for you. Pray for us. For that one area. Maybe it's several areas, okay? It could be several. But you know you're guilty and you're convicted right now. Man, you know what? When we just repent and we confess our sin and repent, we're just getting better now. Our church is just getting better now because we're seeing what's wrong. So, Lord, we thank you for revealing to us our sin and where we've been wrong. And Lord, maybe we haven't hurt people directly, but we have hurt them indirectly, Lord, by talking about them and spreading things with other people. And Lord, I pray that you would forgive us today. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts. Holy Spirit, would you convict us in the areas where we've been wrong and where we go to? We ask for your forgiveness. We receive your righteousness today. And Lord, we choose to walk in righteousness, Lord, and to care for people, to love people. And Lord, to be a church that people are attracted to, a church that people want to be at. Lord, a church where the rest of us, we want to invite people here because it's safe and we trust our church. In Jesus' name. worship team is just going to sing for a second but could you grab your communion cup and would you stand and if you don't have a communion cup and you want to take communion our ushers are in the back if you raise your hand they'll bring it to you but I want to invite you to sing this song along with our worship team I think it's so important for us to have this spirit in mind that we'd be like minded that we'd have this in mind for me as my own church than us together as a church. So join in with the worship team right now. Jesus at the center of our church. Jesus be the center of our church. And every knee will bow 
and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus be the center of our church, Jesus be the center of our church. every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you Jesus Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do You're the center, and everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, and nothing else matters, nothing in this world. going to go ahead and take communion and I'm reminded when Jesus had the last supper all the disciples were around him at the table Jesus was speaking life over them and unity there's several things Jesus talked about and here's the here's the deal is that he knew that they were going to mess up moving forward but it was always about, and, and the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians, it's always about getting back to the table and remembering what Christ has done for us. And we continue to follow Christ. And so that's what we're about when, we say, when we're saying, look, I want to be a person that brings good messages. I want to bring someone who brings unity. I want to br- be someone who fights against division and sees a healthy church so we want to be a healthy body and so we pray we thank you Lord for the body of Christ that you laid down for us that your body was broken so that we could be united thank you for the bread of life we receive that today in Jesus name amen would you receive that Then it's the blood of Jesus that unites us together, washes us, makes us white as snow, makes a church that is unblemished, holy and righteous before him. That he's forgiven us of our wrongs, the things that we have said, the things that we have done that hurts other people. And he's forgiven us so that we can be right in him. So Father, we thank you for sending Jesus, your only begotten son, to take our place on the cross and shed his blood to wipe away all of our sin so that we could be right with you. Lord, we remember that as we open our mouths, as we talk about people and talk about things. And Lord, we just come to be reminded of what you have done for us. Lord, you didn't condemn us. You didn't put us down. You didn't talk about us. But Lord, you invited us. So Lord, we thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you receive that today? Let's sing that two more times through. Can we do that? Jesus, be the center of our church. Come on, church. Let's lift it up today. Jesus, be the center of our church. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus.
must be the center of our church. Come on, let's lift that one last time. Jesus be the center of our church. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. 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 Lord, we thank you for your church. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us in to be part of the body of Christ. Lord, may we be a light in this world drawing people to you that we would be caring that we would be loving that we would be watching out for people believing in the best in people Lord that people would be attracted to your church in Jesus name Amen Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand today and thank him for the body of Christ and the church Here's something we want to do special. We're doing this all month, too, is we're just having some good uh, treats and things like that after church. And if you stayed at home, you're missing out. Because today, uh, we have It's It's. How many of you know what an It's It is? You've been, you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You know what It's It's are. And so uh, we have free It's It's. In the middle of the lobby, you'll go out there, there'll be a table there. And the reason we're doing this is, hey, would you just leave slowly today? And just make sure you introduce yourself to someone new or connect with somebody because we're the body of Christ and we fellowship together. So make sure you take those moments. Let me send you out with the blessing, church. You are God's treasure possession. Your heavenly father is proud of you. He watches over you and he will take care of you. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you and he will help you. Because of Jesus Christ, you can be anything and you can do anything. You are the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. You are a difference maker. Nothing can take away God's greatness in your life. You are blessed. Amen. God bless you guys. 